Hi, everyone, and welcome to Otaku Sphere Weekly, episode 12. I'm Karen, and with me tonight are Sal. Yo. Life Song. Hello. And I was about to say LB, and then I think he just got dropped from the call. Oh, nope, I'm right here. <laughs> oh, he decided to just to not drop from the call, but just show a pic- show video of himself holding a cat to throw me off my game. <laughs> not cool, man. Not cool. How am I supposed to podcast with this adorable kitty in my face? <laughs> Hi, cat. Is that is that your your kitty who who's sick? No, this is Simon, the cutest one Aww. who knows he's cute, and yeah, I did that specifically <laughs> just to see if it would screw you up, and it did, so okay, yeah. done. Yeah, you, you should stop now if we're ever going to discuss anime this evening. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm done. Okay, the cat is now gone. My brain will function again, mostly. Okay, uh, so... Uh, uh, which cat was that one, LB, the one you showed That us? was Simon. Oh. Yeah, New is downstairs resting. Okay, we're all praying for uh, L- LB's um, under-the-weather cat to make a speedy recovery. Um, okay, so now it's time for general otaku chat, but I really have nothing this week. I've really been kind of struggling the last couple of weeks to get things done, which is apparent because I actually missed some shows this week, which I usually don't do. So all I've really been doing is playing a little bit of Sailor Moon Drops, but I think LB had something you want to share on the Sailor Moon Drops front? Um... I mean, I also have just been crazy busy with real life lately, so I haven't been able to do much otaku thing, otaku stuff, besides watch, you know, the occasional simulcast and, you know, play way too much Sailor Moon Drops. I'm I'm not as addicted to the game as I once was, but I'm still playing it on a pretty daily basis. Uh, I mean, I think it's... I'm still really enjoying it, though the event that they're running right now is so ridiculously stupid because it is so hard, and they're only giving us a week to complete it. And it's like, it really? Slow. Really? Yeah, it's uh, it's way too freaking long because, like, I completed the first map, and it's like, okay, now you're on to map two, and I think it's like two of four or something like that. Yeah, something each, like that. Each, each like, map like, has, like, eight or nine stages, and, and they're really hard, and it's like, who is actually going to finish this except, I don't know, maybe premium players who spent, like, $100 on the game, maybe. I don't know. For some reason, I'm still plugging away at the special event stages, even though I know there's no way in hell I'm actually going to finish on time, just because, well, what if... What if I somehow win and get Usagi in her school uniform? <laughs> yeah, I just, I figured out that very quickly that there was no way I was going to complete it. So I was like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to go back to normal levels. Um, did, did you get past 90? Because I know you're stuck on that for a while. That's the one I'm stuck on now, or would be, if I wasn't preoccupied with the special event. Yeah, I'm on 103 or something, something along those lines. Okay, so you're about about 10 past me. Yeah, about um, that. Okay, let me just complain about one thing. So I think the last time we recorded a podcast, I had not gotten Minako yet in Sailor Moon Drops, and now I have. And her ability, Crescent Beam, which clears an entire row from the board, would be the best if it didn't miss 50% of the time. Actually, and it's really pissing me off. It's, you know, I actually find that it hits more often than not for me. Maybe Minako just hates me or something, because I swear, I, I get missed at least 50% of the time. Yeah, I mean, it's prob- I get a hit the majority of the time. It's, very, it's rare that I get a miss. Maybe there's some hidden algorithm based on, I don't know, how many adorable kitties you have, or I don't know, something <laughs> like that. But yeah, I want to write the uh, write the creators of Sailor Moon Drops a strongly worded letter, because they, they have not made Minako awesome enough. <laughs> okay, I guess that's enough mobile game bitching for, for this week. Uh, Life Song, what have you been up to? Absolutely nothing. But see, you actually watched all your shows this week, unlike me, I... so I can't, yeah, I can't <laughs> rag on you too much. Uh, Sal, what about you? Save us. Let's see, I was still, let's see, I was continuing with Trails of Cold Steel, finally at the sixth chapter, so I'm like two chapters from finally beating the game, and about to reach the infamous cliffhanger that left a lot of people wanting for the, wanting for the sequel. Is the sequel... Do you know when the sequel's coming out? This year, this fall, this fall for the Vita and PS3. Okay, that's good. So it's not one of those situations where it's like, there will be a sequel someday. Yeah. So. Maybe after I finish... Well, 
it's going to take a long, long time because I'm just plugging away at it very, very slowly. Maybe after I finish the new uh, Odin Sphere, I'll look into Trails of Cold Steel. I'll say this: uh, like I'm like ninety, like I'm on chapter, I'm like on ninety hours into the game right now. Just, just, just as an estimate of how long the game is. That doesn't bother me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just letting you know because, like I said before, that was mostly me just talking to all the NPCs, finding out like, huh, what are they up to during this section of the game. And surprisingly, in some segments, they sometimes foreshadow some of the stuff that happens in the story. Like, one moment I was, like, talking to this kid, and they were talking about going on some sort of adventure. And next moment in the game, I'm, like, going on this quest to go to this haunted castle to try to rescue them. That's cool. (laughs) I like an RPG with with writing, with words in it. Oh, and the best part, too, is, like, the the, char- the main cast, like, teacher, she pretty much comes off as a type of teacher who just cares about drinking and being kind of like a slacker, but she's actually, like, a badass with like a, with, like, a ridiculous background in terms of, like, being a soldier and stuff, and a guild master. I want to play this game, but, okay, I have to, I have to finish Odin Sphere first, and that's going to take another, probably three or four Ooh, months. Which story are you on in Odin Sphere so far? Um, Mercedes. And I want to clear up something that we were speculating about a couple of weeks ago. I looked up what the trophies are in that game, and you do not need to beat it on super-duper hard mode to platinum the game, so oh, cool. I may actually be able to platinum it. Ah, cool. Yeah, because okay. in hell mode, your HP cap's at 200. <laughs> oh, I think in the original game, they had heroic mode where your HP cap's at 1, so you've actually <laughs> actually improved. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think we're ready to get started on our anime for this week, and because we missed an episode, we've I put down two episodes here for most of these things, but I think in most cases we're probably going to focus on the most recent one, and just because it's fresher in our minds, and, and so on and so forth. Now, one show that will always be fresh in my mind, Big Order, episodes 9 and 10, which is the conclusion of the show. And, um, man, I don't even know where to... Okay, so Rin finds out that Eiji was not the one who caused the Great Destruction. It was Senna, and Eiji just, like, took over the guilt for her. But then she apparently no longer cares that the Great Destruction killed her parents. It's just like, I'm so sorry, Eiji, I'm so sorry, I'll stab myself in the eye, does that make you feel better? He's like, well, no, not in the least. Well, I'll do it anyway! (laughs) And then they kind of go into, like, an Evangelion making a new world, but kind of, sort of, not really, sort of... Th- I don't know. Life song. what did you... Please say something about Big Order that makes sense. Anything that makes sense. Uh, you, wa- you want me to make sense of it? Please? A well, little? I think that they, 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 you know, he used his power on God and put it back in the, in the dimensional thingy, and, and then uh, he made everyone believe they were happy again with his well, superpowers. But wait, but doesn't doesn't his all the order powers, including Ages, come from that godlike figure to begin with? So how could he use yeah, his they, power they, on her? Huh? Yeah, he he used his power on her, and then it disappeared. Wait a second. So was, did this actually happen in the manga, or is this like an anime original ending? Uh, actually, uh, I have something to say on that front, and that is, I, I haven't read enough of the manga myself to say this for a certainty, but I was talking to a couple of friends who have read it, and they said that uh, around the point where Rin first went off uh, to to meet uh, their father... Can I? Can I? Yeah, can I? Uh, the, the plot completely diverged from the manga, and nothing has been uh, related wow. since. So they took okay. so they took that risk because they weren't sure if Big Order could get renewed for a new season down the road. Well, I think from the beginning it was only going to be ten episodes. I mean that, that was broad, that was that was advertised pretty early on. Yeah, uh, I mean, but it could have well, been I like don't... but it could have been ten episodes for the season. <laughs> it is ten episodes for the season. Yeah. Yeah. What am I missing? <laughs> All right, well, in any in any event, um, I don't want to say that it, the plot stopped making sense once Rin decamped because it hadn't made sense all along. But like, once it passed that point, like it reached a point where like I could not even really even follow what was going on, and I found I didn't care. Like in that whole last episode, there was that whole sequence where it was in black and white for some reason. I was just like, wait, who's on whose side? Who's attacking whom? Whose power is doing what? To-? I don't yeah. even care. I think I managed to make sense of most of it, but it's not really worth. It, it was like uh, the only my, my, the, the way I was able to make sense of it was because a lot of it was pulled right out of the the book from Future Diary. It was like, ah, I see where they're going with this. I see what they're doing here because I watched 
Future Diary, and really only because I watched Future Diary, because I, I kind of <laughs> see how it was pulling together. But it was really just a bad imitation. It, mm, yeah. Oh, and uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention how EO very nearly rapes Eiji. Oh, that yeah, that a- happened. Because at first, at the end of the last episode when it showed them together, I was like, oh, she's trying to seduce him. That's, um, well, that's something. And then we realize when we actually see them, well, we, there's a limit to how much we can see because we've got nice censorship blinding light. But he's actually, like, handcuffed to the bed or something and telling her, no, stop. I have to be loyal to Senna. And to her credit, she does stop. She does not become a rapist. But it's like, wow, that's, um, I can't remember the last time I've nearly seen a dude get raped in anime. So, <laughs> thanks, Big Order, I think. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. It, I don't even know. I, I have a feeling that they, they pulled some stuff like the the other power and Senna being the one that caused the great destruction. And I have a feeling some of that actually, you know, is the original story. I don't know for sure. Um, I need yeah, to Senna, Senna being the original one cause of the destruction seems like it would kind of make sense. Yeah, uh because you know, in the beginning, they make a big deal. Like they, they obviously played off the stuff that really did happen in the beginning of the anime. It's just, I guess they did their own thing with it. It's like the tr- it's like the truth of the matter was that the creator of Big Order's editor prevented the team from meeting with him so they could negotiate how to handle the last arc. Just like what almost happened uh, in Shirobako. <laughs> yeah, I have I have no idea what happened. Or maybe maybe it's like what just recently happened with Kumamiko when the the auth- manga author was like, "I'll let you guys handle it," and then was like, "Well, that was a mistake." <laughs> Yeah. Wait, who was the one that so, deleted the Twitter, the account? Was it the author or the one of the people who worked on the anime? It was the writer of the last episode, but oh. I'm sure we will get into that more when we discuss it. Oh, yeah. I can't wait yeah. to hear this. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, but okay, I feel like we I could probably prattle on for another 40 minutes about things that don't make sense by Big Order, but like if the listeners don't know by now that this show is an amazing train wreck that makes no sense, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, so... I don't know. It's it it was it was a total mess, but I would be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it. What about you? Like yeah, I'd be lying too. I actually enjoyed it a good deal. It's just I I stop and think about it and it's like I can't say that it was good. Even though I I, I, I hate I hate saying that I enjoyed it but it isn't good. But I yeah, really I, I did understand, I, in, in this case that's really I don't have a better way to put it. I, yeah, I enjoyed like, it even though it was a complete mess. Yeah, we've been t- talking about this uh, offline a little bit, about how it's often really a cop-out when people say, oh, the show's really, really horrible, but I love it and I really enjoy it. And it's like, well, which one is it? You know, if you're really getting a lot of enjoy it, enjoyment out of it, how horrible is it? How horrible can it be? But I think Big Order is one of those rare cases where you're enjoying it almost because it's horrible. So Yeah, and, and there's also the sense that it could have been so much better than it was. So yeah. it's more in the it's so bad it's good mentality? Or not yeah. even there? Something like that. Because I, I've said this before, but when I was watching Valve Rave, I, even though Valve Rave is kind of perhaps a so bad it's good situation, for some reason the lack of logic in that show just made me mad. Like, why are people <laughs> pretending this all makes sense? It makes no sense, huh? And in big order, I just sort of went with it. Like, wow, that makes no sense. AG's getting raped. Uh, she's pregnant except not because he touched her ribbon. Okay, fine. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right, so... We I guess did, it, I guess it, I guess it could just be the timing and the way how it was presented. Maybe I found yeah. a plausible explanation for everything in Big Order. That doesn't make it good, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we're gonna bid a fond, fond farewell to Big Order, and move on to Kisniver episodes ten and eleven. And uh, Kisniver had really been on a tear lately. I thought it's actually. These two episodes actually weren't as strong as the ones that came before, primarily because in episode 11 they do that whole thing where the other, even though their kid's knife remark is gone, they feel Agatha's pain, and they talk to the teacher about it, and she's like, oh, yes, you proved that it's possible. And it's like, okay, so you, you guys just like spent billions of dollars on this inhumane experiment to prove that empathy is a real thing that exists. Good on you. Good job. <laughs> it just seemed really pointless. Uh, Sal, what do you think of these two episodes? Yeah, now that you mention it that way, yeah, that was a very disappointing episode. Man, I can't believe Trigger went there. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, is there some depth I'm missing or something? Or are they just like, oh, we have confirmed that you can actually feel another's pain through an emotion called empathy. Yeah. It is good that we know this I, is a real thing. But in, all ser- I, but in all seriousness, I still enjoyed the episode nonetheless. I just took it as, okay, maybe they were going more in terms of bonding. Like, okay, here's these people who would never become friends, 
And now, like, hey, even though they they swore they weren't gonna be friends, like all of a sudden, they kind of they kind of feel the impact of that person's like struggle. So yeah, yeah I'm I, still enjoying the show too. But I'm sorry, Lexa. So. Yeah, I think say? it was. I think there was more to it than that. It was, it wasn't just that they you know they proof empathy exists. It was that they actually understood why they they felt it and they understood why he was feeling the way he was feeling. Yeah. So it was like a more keenly developed, yeah. perceptive sense of empathy, I guess? Like, I guess they wanted to prove it where it could be felt through random people instead of just people who just naturally become friends. Yeah. Uh, th- there, was, there was that aspect of it, too, that they took people that are very different and mixed them together. Um, I'm not sure how to, how to put it into words, but uh, th- there, there was an emphasis, like in the episode before... Where, um, oh, what is her name? Sonazaki. I don't know. <laughs> no, not Sonazaki. The, uh, the one who's always taking care of, uh, the, uh, the main character, the, the white haired kid. Chidori, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, where she's, she's yelling at, um, oh, I'm doing terrible at names tonight. I can't remember his name. Tenga, Tenga. Yeah, Tenga. Tenga, yeah. Uh, and she's like, I, I can't understand your feelings. They're not mine. And so the, um, the conclusion was kind of a reversal of that. I can't, understand just, your feeling, or I can't understand your feelings, even though they're not mine. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can understand that there's kind of supposed to be more going on there, but maybe just the way the teacher phrased it, it seemed like it was too easy to just kind of sum it up as, okay, the kids have learned that empathy exists. Good for them, you know. Well, and there, oh yeah, and, and then there's well, also that twist with Sonazaki, how she was actually the source of why Agata couldn't feel pain, and that he wasn't the only one that suffered from that. <laughs> the, I, I think the I think the experiment was more. Now that we've proven that we can do this, we can do this with other people, and then they would be we 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 can create bonds with people, yeah. and they will they will last beyond the experiment. I think that was kind of the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess maybe I'm just getting hung up on the fact that I didn't I didn't like the way that that plot point was presented more than anything else. But um, but about the Kisniver experiment, so we learn about the horrible the horrible truth about the Kisniver experiment, how how a lot of the kids who were originally involved in it became vegetables. How Sonazaki had like a hundred times the pain of anyone else, and that's that's responsible for her charming personality. And apparently, ten years later, they were like, you know, that was such a roaring success. Let's do that again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just a little bit confused by. By what the Kisniver committee's logic is here, but uh, I don't know. I'm still enjoying enjoying the show a lot, and I I really like the the way that uh, Agata's hair is suddenly turning brown. Yeah, and kind of interesting in the other episode where he was starting to understand people's feelings finally. <laughs> yeah, kind of you know, like a neat turnaround. It's just for me for for maybe I want to say from the part where they started focusing on. Maki up through episode 9, Kiz and Ivor was kind of in this perfect place where I was like feeling exactly what the show wanted me to feel and then in episodes 10 or 11 it didn't get bad or anything but it, suddenly there became more of a disconnect where it's like okay now the show is telegraphing that it wants me to feel X but I don't feel X hmm. Oh that's a shame, I, I'm actually, I've actually been very into it I, Yep, I same here Oh, I'm cur- I'm, I can't wait for the finale seeing that crazy Kiz and Ivor move Sonazaki's pulling like, yeah, what what is she even doing? She, is she trying to? She looks like she's Go going like some kind of crazy last stand. Uh, I think she's gonna do something off the wall. I mean, that's that's all I've got. Maybe she's gonna bind everyone in the city. Something crazy like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it seems to be like she thinks that that being bonded through wounds is like the only route to happiness. Although, why she would think that with her life experience is interesting. But um, but. But I guess that's the only thing that makes that makes sense is that she would be trying to bind a lot of people. Hmm. Hmm, I don't know. Kind of makes me think this: like, did Sonazaki feel the pain of everyone else while during the experiment? Because I remember they're still giving her that injection that's supposed to suppress the pain. Uh, yeah, um, I, think, I think she is still feeling their pain. I think she's still feeling the pain of the people from the original experiment, though, not the the current Kisniver bunch, right? Maybe. Right. Right. Okay. Um, okay, so I think we're gonna we're gonna just come back to Kisniver next week after episode twelve, which I be- I believe it's the conclusion, right? Next week. Hopefully, we'll see. You I know. think so. Okay. You know, okay. some shows like to pull the episode fourteen, even though it's not as common, but sometimes it happens. 
I don't think I've ever seen a show go to episode 14. <laughs> There's the whole, does it end at 12 or does it end at 13? I mean, business, I, know, I, know I, a couple, I know a couple 90s animes and early 2000s one did end at 14. I don't remember which, but I saw it happen it was, before. Uh, was it Monogatari? I, if you want weird things with anime, just look at Shaft. They, they've caused half of it. Yeah, actually, now that you mentioned it, I think Mono, um, Bakamonogatari did have a weird number of episodes. <laughs> okay, 15. it does, does happen. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. 15, one off. But if I remember correctly, the last three episodes actually were streamed online, whereas episodes 1 through 12 were broadcasted. Yeah, yeah, stop being complicated, Shaft. <laughs> Too complicated. Meanwhile, that's another just series. For the record, Kiz, I looked it up. Kiz Niver ends at episode 12. Thanks. Oh, cool. Oh. Okay, just since you mentioned Bakamonogatari, that's another series that I'd like to I'd like to catch up on someday. But there've been like five seasons of it since I stopped paying attention, and it's like I'm a little behind too. Yeah. It's it's re- it's worth it though. It's worth it. Oh yeah, Vertical <laughs> brought over the prequel novel. Kizumonogatari, I think they were called. Oh, something interesting to note on that, actually. Um, it got an audiobook. I don't know if you guys care about audiobooks or, nice. at all or not. Very nice. Who, who's uh, voicing yeah, the audiobook? That's cool. I don't remember who did it. I've, I I own it. I haven't listened to it yet, but I just thought that was really cool. Oh, I, like, I are, are you cool with finding that information so we could list it in the show notes about the Kizumonogatari audiobook? I can do that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I, I haven't listened to very many audiobooks because usually when I want to read a book, you know, I just read it. I don't really need the audio component, but I think it, the idea of it is really cool. So I'm, I'm glad they did that also. I may check that out one of these days. Uh, okay, we should probably move on to something that's actually on our list, though. <laughs> okay, so moving on to The Lost Village, the conclusion, episodes 11 and 12. And um, I don't think this all added up the way it was supposed to. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'd have to go back and watch it from the beginning in order to be precise and be like, well, this didn't add up and this was misleading and so on and so forth. But I don't feel like it really it really came together. Although there were aspects of the final two episodes that I liked, it just felt a little bit discombobulated to me. Um, like you think you, you think it didn't make sense, or you think that um, it just didn't feel right? Um, it felt like. Well, okay, I know it wasn't a classic mystery in the sense that you wouldn't have been able to put this together even if you were following very close attention because it just it wasn't laid out like a mystery. Mm. But even so, I felt like where it ended up did not seem to pay off on what we were kind of promised in the beginning, if that makes any sense. Like, it just seemed to... Maybe maybe I'm just trying to find a better way to say it never went where I wanted it to go, but I feel like that's not quite right because it's, it's not just that it didn't yeah, go where I wanted it to go. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I think the problem is that it, it shifted into a character, into a character drama. Like, yeah. it, it did it pretty early. I, I, I don't want to say that I feel misled because I don't feel misled. It did it really early on. It even it even started with character introductions. Mm-hmm. The the problem is that it didn't have enough time to focus on all thirty characters. Yeah, like it, really o- it only picked it only picked a couple of major characters to focus on. And I honestly think, though, that having 30 characters really, really hurt it. I mean, I know, like, they all kind of had a quirky take on the situation, but, like, they didn't all stand out enough that it warranted having 30 of them. Yeah. And it, it made it it made it made hard to be like, wait, is this the guy who did the blah, 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 or is this the guy who did the blah, blah, blah? There, there was no need to have that confusion. Yeah, I, I think the biggest problem is just that it focused on a few too many of them. Like, even even if they'd just been less... Like if they if they, if they hadn't really done much of anything and, and just ignore them, like we didn't really need to know about the two survival guys. They they didn't really matter. Yeah, they never really did much of a consequence, did they? Uh, yeah, the the crazy girl who wanted to execute everyone, she didn't really matter either. Um. Yeah, and um and I like there was stuff early in the series. Like I don't remember exactly what happened, but something happened with the bus driver at one point where he's, like, leaving, and he's like, oh, I don't need these kids, whatever, and then something happens, and he stops, and then he comes back to the village, and we're wondering, oh, what happened to him? Has he been possessed? Or- oh, oh no, we, I know exactly what happened. Um, he saw his uh, daughter. Yeah. Right, okay, that was a bad example. <laughs> I, I feel like there, there was stuff that was kind of hinted at that either there isn't an explanation for it, or the explanation is just kind of lame. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm not doing a very good job thinking of examples. But um, I did I did like the fact that um, Reiji turned out to be Misaki's Nanaki. 
<laughs> and the little the little Nanaki at the very end, Mitsumune's new oh, Nanaki. That was, yeah, that was adorable. Was so adorable, yeah. But I just feel like I wonder if maybe the show just tried to do too much. Like maybe if it had pared down the characters and it focused a little bit more on Masaki and her imaginary yeah. friend syndrome all along, maybe it would have been more compelling. I don't know. It just I don't want to say it was. I don't believe it was a train wreck. We have big order for that, but yeah. It, it was I more mean, like two trains that that had a close call. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it wrapped up. It 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 resolved. It we kind of got the mystery of what was going on and stuff. Yeah, you know, oh, something that I'm sorry, you you first, Lysol. I, I was just gonna say, you know, I I feel like the the, the resolution that we did get, is I actually I actually liked it. It's just there yeah. there was no real way for them to to give a resolution for everyone. Yeah. Though at least it turned yeah. out that I was right about why certain people don't age when they leave the village. <laughs> yeah, they made about embracing that. about how about embracing their their nanakis and make and taking them with them. Like I was right about that. <laughs> yeah, the, the explanation yeah. originally didn't make sense to me, but once we got to the episode after that, I was like, oh, okay, I, I follow what's yeah. going on. I was still confused about that at the end because you have those a bunch of people who are like, "Yeah, we're lazy. We don't feel like doing anything." It's like, well, it's because your nanaki is now outside yourself. You're losing your soul. But then if they leave the village and just leave their nanaki there, their soul is apparently fine. Like, wait, what? I, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, they have to be reconnected with their soul when when they leave. Yeah. And if they completely lose their soul, they get ejected. Yeah. And if they get ejected, they die. Mm-hmm. I feel like these rules, I feel like we needed like a Death Note outlying of rules of the Lost Village or something like that. They gave them to us, just not all at one time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess if anything, it might be, it might, I guess Lost Village might might be a show that flows better, like if you're marathoning it than watching it weekly, just, yeah, so, you know, re- just it, so you remember a lot of the key points happening. I bet it actually would. I bet it actually would work better in because I had a couple yeah. people on my feed who were like marathoning like the Lost Village, and they were like having a blast with it. <laughs> so maybe it's more. F- which I, I enjoyed the show as well too. So yeah, I have. I don't know. I think to be honest, I think I could have skipped it this season and not missed a whole lot, depending considering on how just ambivalent I feel at the end here. But part of that is because I got this idea in my head of what the show was going to be based on the first episode, and I thought it was going to be this really kind of. Um, dark black comedy from like a really odd angle yeah. that was going to kill a lot of people off and stuff and, and, and it just it, it's so after the first episode it immediately was nothing like that so yeah, no. I, I'm beginning to wonder how much of my disliking certain shows is actually <laughs> on the show or is it I start to plot a trajectory a trajectory in my head and when the show doesn't go there I'm irrationally mad at it uh, so. I think that there's at least some point to that I mean they really didn't give us a very solid impression of what the show was going to be and yeah, and that worked toward episode, its strength to a degree but it it didn't ever work as well as it could have yeah i think the first episode at the very least it kind of gave us the impression it was going to be a very witty show and that kind of disappeared immediately well yeah. not completely but mostly there was like a couple, like one or two cute jokes an episode <laughs> whereas the first episode was like const, constant black humor hilarity all right so are we done with this confusing but ultimately interesting show I think so. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're done with our two Okada shows for this season. Until she comes back next season with 14 shows, probably. <laughs> okay, we move on to ReZero 11 and 12. And um, I, I did like getting the story on Ram and Rem, but um, I feel annoyed that we still don't know who was behind the curse, who was who was controlling the dogs and like I'm glad that we moved on to the next art the next arc and Reinhardt and Felt and everybody are back but I still feel like what was the point of going through like seven you episodes know, whatever that was if we still don't know Yeah you know I I'd be annoyed I'd be a lot more annoyed if I if I didn't trust the storytelling I think that it's just going to do the exact same thing that happened with Felt at the end of the last arc and it's going to come back later and it's going to be important i i still think i'm right i still think that it was the uh one of the one of the dead witches possessing the dog but uh, i will have to wait and see because it's you know what did you think of rose wall some suddenly coming back and saving the day um i don't really you know rose wall is is still the biggest mystery to me uh, we have a little bit of his motivation now uh he wants to kill the dragon Right, right. Uh, the only connection I have 
pot potential connection I have with the dragon and anything else that's been going on, because we really don't know that much about the dragon. We literally only know that it's important to the rulers of the nation, uh, or the old rulers, uh, is that the hand that grabs um, Subaru when, when he dies mm -hmm. and like pulls him backwards, it looks like a like kind of like a dragon hand. It does? It doesn't look human. I thought it was like a scary witch hand. <laughs> it could be a scary witch hand too, but it it, it, it kind of looks like it has claws. Mm, okay, I, I, I kind of want to go go and see that now. Uh, I, I've I've watched it a couple times to make sure that I'm not crazy, but maybe I am crazy. I don't, who knows? <laughs> um, let's see. So now that we just started out, kind of started on this new arc, I don't really. I mean, we meet the new girl who's like the world is oriented for my personal benefit. Go me. <laughs> uh, um, that's that's nice. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of kind of at a loss with ReZero right now. Well, they're starting a new arc. It's the they're, we're getting back into the Throne War stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have some Game of Thrones style nonsense now, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's obviously something dark to all of it. That uh, I assume that's why uh, Emil. Oh, am I going to get her name wrong? Amelia? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I got it right. Um, why she wanted him to stay back at the uh, inn. She knew he would. She knew he wasn't going to like what's coming up. Yeah. Well, apparently she didn't know what was coming up because she didn't know they were going to introduce Felt as the other, uh, the other um, candidate for the throne, right? Yeah, that's true. Maybe she... Uh... Maybe she's just like, Subaru cannot be trusted in general. He should not be let out of the house <laughs> ever. Which, you know, given his history, you can't really, can't really blame her. You can't really blame her too much for that. Yeah. I just, I, I ReZero, I still like the show, but I've been saying for a while now, I want it to give me something else that it hasn't been giving me, because I, um, I mean, I think I do trust the story overall the way you do, but it's like, I wanted to come out of that arc with the Mobbies and Ram and Rem knowing more than I do, and I'm kind of like, how much longer do I need to, do I need to watch this before some of my questions will be answered, but... I guess I'm just going to have to suck it up because I'm not dropping it. So, <laughs> Okay, uh, um, anything further on ReZero? Hello? I don't think so. Nope. Okay, I thought I actually dropped the call for a second. <laughs> Where is everybody? Hello? I did hear like a vroom like in the background, like it's a, like a truck, like a car just drove by us. <laughs> uh, I didn't, I don't think I heard that. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to yawn. Oh, okay, sorry. This podcast is going to be so fun to edit. Okay. Um, so we're going to move on to Joker Game 11 and 12. <sighs> Joker Game, the show, another show that never went where I wanted it to, but it was good anyway. Uh, in this case, I think we probably want to discuss both these episodes. Um, in episode 11, 11, I was pretty shocked that they actually killed one of the spies, because I got used to thinking of the Joker game dudes as being, like, superhuman. So I kept thinking the whole episode, oh, it's going to be a trick. It's actually, like, a body-switching maneuver. And he's not really dead. And then at the end, when he's really dead, I'm like, what? Seriously? Uh, what would you think of that one, of uh, Eleven, Life Song? Yeah, I mean, it was it was interesting to see more of Yuki doing his thing, too, because, you know, we got we got to see him, uh, I guess he won, or I guess he fought fought the uh, the Russians in World War One or something. Yeah, he apparently or was it the won Germans, World or... War One single-handedly or something to that effect. Uh, so, so who knows what he did, but, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I was thinking after that episode, we're going to need an explanation for why Japan didn't win World War II when they had Yuki there the whole time, but I think 12 gave us one. And that is because Yuki refuses to use female spies because because they're they're killers and can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that did happen. Wow. I, I'd already forgotten about that. Yeah, there's a, there's a, for those that don't watch it, there's a scene in uh, Joker Game 12, which is the finale, where he says, do you know why D-Agency only uses men? It's because women kill for foolish reasons, like love and hate. And I just kind of assume the reason why all the spies were men is because, well, it's 1939. <laughs> and then when he actually gave that reason, that apparently the problem with women isn't that they're, they're not competent as spies, it's that they might just kill people for no reason. I'm like, I can't decide if that's better or worse. <laughs> Yeah, I, that was a kind of unnecessary. I, I I don't I don't know why I don't know what point that had to. That, that was a weird note to end the show on. 
Yeah, well, it did, it, it did kind of make me wonder, huh? You know, you would kind of wonder why Yuki wouldn't use women as spies, but given his whole kind of philosophy of spying and how you want people that, you know, no one considers a threat who can pass on information, like, you'd think he would want to have female spies. So I guess they had to give him some reason why he didn't. But, um... And the, anyway, the last episode was uh, someone actually leaving the agency because they realized they're not cut out for it, which was interesting. I mean, I like the way the show has touched on certain things about being a spy are kind of messed up, and if you're psychologically healthy at all, you probably don't want to do it. But um, in the end, the series still remained just a bunch of little vignettes that never really, never really bit off anything substantial. So I'm still a little bit disappointed in that. Yeah, but they're they're not they're not really connected in time either. I think like uh, d- didn't they show the dead spy in this episode in like episode twelve? I think they did. Yeah, because this was in 1939, and I think a lot of the other episodes have taken place in like 1940, maybe yeah, a little they, later. They they jump around in time, and it's just kind of it's kind of obnoxious. Does how the they show go. have an indicator? Like you'll see on the screen the year to let you know it's that yeah, year. Yeah, the very be- at the very beginning of the episodes, they will sometimes tell us what year it is. That's but not of, always. That's kind of a bad mistake. I remember, like, for example, like Bacano would always let you know when the show was jumping between different years. So yeah, I, no, it, it hasn't done a very good job of. I mean, I, I feel like if I were to go back through and catalog it all, I I could. I don't know that I care to do that because I don't think it was important. <laughs> uh, it's not as important as me going back through Panday Peace and counting the jokes because that's <laughs> that's a high priority project. <laughs> um. I don't know. I really, I really enjoy Joker Game, but I kind of wonder if there's a lot more substance to the novels, and maybe if there is, it's possible we could get another season that'll do some of the things I think it has the potential to do, or is this really a good representation of the novels, and it's a bunch of vignettes about World War II, and that is all you get? Well, pretty yeah, I wonder. War, really. I really wonder, because it, it, it set itself in a perfect position to you know, involve real history, and it almost doesn't at all. It, it pretty yeah. much avoids anything real. Oh, the wow. whole looks entire like time. looks like the novels are only three volumes, so maybe it covered the whole thing, or maybe they're still wait. They're real novels, so they're longer than they're... light novels. So, yeah. Um, I had a thought. You know, Joker Game and The Lost Village, even though they have almost nothing in common as anime, do have something in common that the opening episode or arc gave us kind of a false impression of where the where the show was going to go. Because I think the opening arc of Joker Game was what led me to believe it was going to be dealing with World War II and in, in a more substantial way. And then even wow. the character who they introduce in that in that little arc, Asakuma, we never see him again after Episode 2, I'm pretty sure. No, we didn't. Uh, he might have even been an anime original character to introduce the show, for all I know. I don't know that that's true. But, but I, I kept thinking um, he was in the opening. He had to come back sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was it wasn't just that too. It was the the very next episode they jump to uh the the episode where there's a spy uh, in France um before or during the German occupation and you know, Yuki tells him you can pull out where the 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 army has decided to join with uh with Germany or Japan's decided to ally with Germany and you know, that's you, you need the very obvious. Okay, we're, we're talking about real events here for no greater purpose than to talk about them. Yeah, and so then they you ne- never really capitalize on that ever again. Yeah, and then we just keep going back, in, either back in time or at around the same point in time. We never get past that, like that one moment in 1940. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. so. I think that was. I think that was the furthest forward we went. Yeah, you know, it almost. I think it would have been better, even though it, it might have been dramatically questionable if they'd made that the last episode because then we'd know like okay real world war ii is coming <laughs> so yeah uh, uh, i guess I, th- I think they i think they wanted to end it on the well i kind of like the way they ended it on this by getting out yeah i, I just kind of feel like you know it, it, the statement of you're not really cut out for this and no one watching is probably cut out for it either yeah. Well, actually, when, when Yuki made his whole comment about how women can't be good spies, I was like, oh, Yuki, I'll be an amoral killer for you. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's not, that's not what he wants. <laughs> I, I, you know, he, he, I, think, I think that most people just I, – I, I, I kind of feel like it missed something greater than it could have, it could have said in that, in that point. And it, it had nothing – would have had nothing to do with women. It's just that most people wouldn't be able to do this, period. Yeah, I think that's probably – 
that probably would have been a better direction for them to go because I think on a I think that's a point the show's been making all along throughout its run. Yeah. Um Okay, so I don't know. I mean I guess on the whole on the whole, I'm disappointed with the Joker game, but it's not like, oh no, I'm disappointed. I'm so mad. I spent time with it because it was fun to watch and I did enjoy it. Yeah, it just, it, was, it, it just show. was never, yeah. It was, it was good. It was just was never great, you know. Agreed. Okay, so with that, we'll move on to Flying Witch Ten, which I think will be a very short discussion because this is one of those episodes of Flying Witch where they forgot there are witches in it. Um, <laughs> it's like they do a cooking project in school and then they pick some freaking apples or something. And I swear that's all they do in this episode. Yeah, they made the creepy cookies. Creepy cookies, right. Okay, that was sort of a witchy witchy thing, I guess. But um, um, not often, but every once in a while, Flying Witch is just kind of of dull and kind of forgets to do its thing that we like about it, and that was this episode. So, uh, anything further about it? That's... I I really don't remember. Uh, You know what? I, I will say that uh, actually, yes. I, no, I just remembered. I thought it was interesting that they actually were showing, and I don't know, infomercial is the right word. They were they were actually showing real gardening techniques in the episode. Oh, really? Well, yeah, uh, that would make sense. Come to think of it. And, and, yeah, they were. They, how to how to prune the trees? You know, make sure there's enough nutrients to make the apples. And in in an earlier there, I was like the the trick with the onions. I was like, yes, that's a very useful thing to know for cutting onions. Um, I, 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 I don't know, uh, you know, if, if you needed to learn those things, Flying Witch taught you something. You yeah, see, this is another show that's kind of bait and switch. Instead of being called Flying Witch, it should be called, like, Vegetable Preparation. Then, then we'd be... <laughs> then we would have known what we were signing up for. Okay, we're going to move on to Twin Star. Oh, um, sorry, before we do that, uh, we would be talking about Flying Witch 11 but also, but that is delayed this week for some reason, so we'll be talking about that uh, next week. We're going to move on to Twin Star Exorcist 10 or 11, and I was a bad girl, and I did not watch these this week, so LB, tell me what happened. I don't know. I had, I dropped the series a long time ago because I didn't have time. Oh, God damn it. I, oh. <laughs> I, I purposely put stars on the outline so I'd remember what you were watching and I I'll, oh, I'll, I'll give it a I'll give it a quick I'll give it a quick uh, go the go for it <laughs> uh, some some character voiced by Miyaki Sawashiro shows up and they run around town doing crazy things that like date things that she makes them do it's pretty all, all pretty much filler and then she leaves that's it for two two episodes both episodes. I don't remember the episode before that. It was her introduction, and maybe she did something else with them. I, it, it was all related to the same stuff. It was all her. She, okay. was, she was those two episodes, and she didn't really matter, so... Yeah. Okay, so I'll probably catch up on Twin Star Exorcist eventually, but I'd be lying if I said I was particularly looking forward to it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to move on to the show that I don't watch. Well, not the show I forgot to watch, but the show I have never watched. Macross Delta, I think, 11 and 12. Yeah. Uh, Sal, how, how do you feel about Macross Delta these days? Well, let's see. I mean, nothing much really happened. It was just everyone mourning over a big character that died, and now they're building up for a major battle, which I guess is going to be like the probably the major thing to happen before the show transitions to its second half, because I think it's going to be 25 or 26 episodes, so it's going to be going to the summer. Uh, Life, what about you? Yeah. I really I really like the um, funeral scene yeah. of, of uh, what was it, 11, episode 10, 11? That was, a, 11. That was 11, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, just, just the way it built into the world and kind of, you know, I, I, I've kind of felt like I'm going through the motions with this show a bit. It's very... It's so Macross, it's like... I feel like I feel like parts of the show, like, I've already seen it, almost. Um, that, that was a really neat little yeah. touch that felt very original. Yeah, it kind of... It kind of... Yeah, I think this show is also as strong as when you actually see more about, like, the Ragna culture, because that's, like, the only thing that's unique to that show, because that race has never been shown in the series ever. They're, like, a completely new race. Yeah, and now they're all kind of panicked and running from their home, and potentially, you know, the the space forces are going yeah. to blow up their, possibly ruin their planet. Oh, by the way, like, did they ever mention who Lady M is? I don't know who she is. All right, I think she might be Melia, like Mirage's grandmother. Oh, I don't know. From the that's what I'm gonna guess because 
<laughs> you never. They, yeah, they they keep hinting at it like it's a big thing. Obvi- obviously, seeing, they're seeing as to... this Lady M has like an influence in the military that she was able to help them keep the ruins she... alive. Uh, at She's least until at least time. until they get ready and until they at least get into the final battle. Oh yeah, also live the whole cockpit thing was. I think that was a shout out to Roy's death as well from the original Mark Macross. Because oh, like his because his the, cockpit, the not, heart not, shot. not the shot like that, but the fact that his cockpit was messed up upon his death as well too. The only difference was that you found that out before his death, so it was like holy, like no, no, he can't go. Oh. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> and and the worst part too, like it was it was like while he was next to his girlfriend, they were like having this dinner. That's where the pineapple reference I told you came from. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like yeah, she was preparing well, a she was preparing a plate of like ham with pineapple because it was like his favorite meal, and he was gonna get ready to eat. And it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, the, the, the the problem I have with it with Macross at this point is like I feel like they're 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 reading from the Macross playbook and yeah. they're writing. The- well, off. here's the other thing, too. Like, even though Shoji Kawamori is credited to be a big figure in Macross, in the original show, he was only the mech designer. I forgot who... He wasn't even the director or head writer for the show. So... And none of those people who worked on that series or the later ones haven't been involved in the franchise in a while. So this could be the, fra- the factor of why they're threading to older territory instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, mostly. Yeah, maybe. I, I like what they're doing with the with yeah. Ragnar. I feel invested in mm-hmm. Ragnar. If they blow up Hell the planet... Yeah. Yes, I'll be mad. I, 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 might, I might just be like, okay, I don't care anymore. Yeah, and also like the jellyfish. The, the, <laughs> they're supposed to reincarnate into people. And they represent, and their tradition represents the souls of those who passed uh, on. I'll never be able to eat jellyfish ever. <laughs> yes, again. but That's like, why. technically you don't eat jellyfish, since I remember you told me you were a vegan, so to you it wouldn't matter. <laughs> I was... I, I am vegan, but yes, I was just quoting the character. Yeah, <laughs> and I've never eaten jellyfish before either, so <laughs> it doesn't affect us in any way. Can you eat jellyfish? I thought they well, were poisonous. Well, I know there was that. I know there was that one. Je- I think it was a jelly. F- I know there was that one time you know, way back where I think it was Josh Talentino from J Two reported about how there were these giant jellyfish infesting Japan, and they found out that their jelly was edible, and they were making and they're marketing on that jelly. So I guess some jellyfish are edible to some extent. They just seem so unappetizing. <laughs> oh my goodness! It does seem very unappetizing. So okay, yeah, well, here's hoping that it, also life. I think the design for like the protoculture ship that the Windmirians have, like that's also a shout out to the protoculture ruin designs that were shown in Macross. Do you remember Love and in Macross Zero? Cool. Yeah. It's well, like when you're watching any Macross thing, you need like a Macross expert sitting next to you to point out all these. Yeah, things. pretty yeah, you much. Try to do. Especially since the shows are very so far in between. It's not a yearly franchise. It's like this show happens when it happens type of thing. So it does require a little bit, a little bit of memorization of some of the lore. Though it's mostly just an extra companion piece. You can still enjoy the show to an extent without knowing the lore. Yeah, I might even say that like, I, I kind of wonder if I even would have liked Frontier as much as I, as I did if I had seen another Macross before it. Because I kind of kind of feel like Macross probably did the same thing too and pulled from the, the playbook a bunch. I, I, just, I don't really like how predictable it is. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, are we ready to move on to Kumamiko, which, if nothing yes. else, did not end predictably. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. no. Yeah, Let's I remember get to this. Ending. Okay, so, uh, Kumiko, here's the thing. We've been saying all along that Natsu is right and Machi actually is not ready to go to high school in the city. So the fact that they would end it with her deciding not to go to high school in the city is not in and of itself a problem. It's almost like they just decided to do it in the most awful, emotionally gutting way possible. And it was, the way it was done, I wonder if there was a complete disconnect between how we were supposed to perceive it and how it came across because it came across like Machi was basically traumatized and reverted to an extremely childlike state and will never be the same again <laughs> and it was it was really just just gutting uh LB what about you yeah, yeah i mean i'm going to try and not like just blast the ending of this series into oblivion if you want to you i think in this case you're entitled <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I heard. Yeah, some, I heard. I just, oh, sorry. No, it's fine. It just. 
I feel really angry because, like, 12 weeks ago, I was raving about this series. I was telling everyone I know that, oh, this series is so cute. It's so fun. It's going to be great. You should totally watch this. And now I'm at the end and I'm telling... And all those people that I told to watch the series, I'm actually... I'm literally going back and telling them, if you haven't started yet, don't. Just don't. (laughs) And it's just... And it's really frustrating to me that, you know... it. To end it up this way, because like I said, it started so promisingly. Um, I know that a lot of people are angry at Natsu because of the role that he played in traumatizing Machi, and I totally get that. Um, I still stand by my opinion, though, that had the series removed Yoshio and Hibiki altogether and just left it all about, you know, Machi and Natsu being cute and fun and having fun together, this series could have remained totally charming. But I I still put a lot of the blame on Hibiki and, and Yoshio. Uh, not Hibiki so much, but I really think what happened at the end was mostly Yoshio's fault. And I don't blame Natsu very much, first of all, because I like Natsu. But second of all, because I think Natsu kind of had a moment of weakness when he was being selfish, and he knew he was being selfish, and he felt bad about it. Whereas yeah. Yoshio has just be, been being awful for the whole show. Oh, I'll so, be okay. on a different note. Yeah, like- if- if the Kumamiko manga comes over here, just tell them to check out the manga instead. Yeah, I mean, if it ever does, then I yeah. might. But honestly, the anime left such a sour taste in my mouth that I know that the manga is different because the manga author pretty much told us that, yeah, this was wow, you know, one of those things. But, you know, I... The uh, anime well, you just know, left such a sour taste. We should probably clarify what, what we mean for some people who might not have seen that reference, because apparently the author, I don't know on what social network he left it, but he wrote some kind of a post. Tough. Yeah, he wrote some kind of a post like, um, you know, um, I have a lot of respect for the people who made the anime, and I didn't check the storyline beforehand, which I probably should have, but I really, basically really did not like what they did with the last episode at all. And then one of the creators of the show, like, deleted their account on social media or something like that. I don't have the details right, but there's definitely some kind of social media drama with uh, Kumimiko. So, oh man. Life song? Yeah, I, I would... I think you guys have already said it. I, I agree. <laughs> Sorry. <Bless you. laughs> um, yeah, I, it was just really, really disappointing note to see the show end on. I'm like, I, I imagine not to... His, his the way he ended it with him was so out of character. Like I mentioned, the very next scene would be him realizing, "Oh, this is bad. I can't leave it like this." But that's where they ended it, and it's just. Well, let me, let me ask you a question, though. And LB, you can chime in on this too, because I'm pretty sure that the the message. I don't think the message we were supposed to take away is that. Okay, Machi is too seriously mentally ill to function outside of the society. She never will. She just has to deal with it. That's not the message I think they wanted us to take away. So if we weren't supposed to take away that, what were we supposed to come away with from episode 12? I think so the, dead silence. <laughs> I think the only thing that we could have taken away from it is, oh, look, she won't have to be separated from Natsu now. Yay! Mm-hmm. Even though she's a brain-damaged infant for the rest of her life. <laughs> my question... Yeah. Sorry. Uh, well, it just it I, seems like it would have been so easy to end it properly and just have, have Natsu be like... Have her agree with Natsu like, that she's not ready. And be like, yeah, but you know what? We're going to work on this so that you can go to the city some other time. You don't have to go to high school in the city to enjoy yeah. the city. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, I'll be. I'm sorry. I cut you off like five times this evening. No, no worries. I was in, interjecting a little bit there. Um, my thing is... is I'm curious, um, does anybody think maybe in hindsight we weren't supposed to like Natsu as much as we did? I mean, he was really charming and fun and good, but in the end, you know, maybe we weren't supposed to like him as much as we did? Is no, that, no, uh, you I can't. That can't be true. Oh, I'll tell you why. You read the Kumamiko manga life. Was Natsu meant to be liked in the manga from what you read? Natsu's a little bit devious, but it's always cute and funny. It's not. Okay. Bad. There is a shot in the opening of Natsu standing in front of the Eiffel Tower wearing a bow tie 
and a shiny black top hat. And he, like, <laughs> takes off the top hat and bows. Now, if I was not supposed to like Natsu, then what the hell is the point of yeah, that? <laughs> right. No, if anything, um, I think we probably weren't supposed to hate Yoshio. Uh, and, and, you know, in the manga, I don't hate mon- the manga version of Yoshio. He's, he's a dense hick. In this one, he's an obnoxious jerk. I mean, well, he's he, outright... He, he basically he, says he's willing to sacrifice Nachi's mental and physical health for the good of the village. It's like, well, in the old days, we used to sacrifice the Shrine Maidens. Nothing's really changed. Yeah, I mean, that is basically what he said. And that, I think that was what, if I understood what the author said, if that is, in fact, what the author said, that that was what he was upset about. Yeah. Was, was, was uh, Yoshio's line about sacrificing the Miko, like... It, it, like the very, that goes against what was established in the very first episode, which is that you know we're in the future now. Um, we're not. In the, we're not in the ancient. Yeah. Also, this, so going back to what LB said about recommending the series and then aggressively unrecommending it, I feel like Kumiko does leave me in a very strange place in terms of how to perceive it. Because I mean, the source material was so strong that when it was good, it was really good. But when it was bad, it was like, what the hell is wrong with these people who are making the show? And it, I think it's rare that, I don't know, I, I maybe maybe I'm misremembering, but I can't remember a time where I've ever liked like the inherent premise of a show so much and disliked the execution so much, you know? Yeah, that, yeah. that was really strong in this show. Yeah, so, I mean, I definitely didn't regret watching it because, because it... it it had a lot going for it, but I'm I'm forever going to wonder what the hell they were even trying to accomplish with that with that ending. So, yeah. okay, I guess I guess we'll never know. Before we right. move on, I gotta know though. I mean, mm-hmm. with your experience with the first season, I mean, for me personally, I the chances of me rewatching this season is slim. I I'm just I'm going to remember that ending and I'm going to remember that bitter taste in my mouth and I'm probably not going to rewatch it again. Um if it got a second season though, if would you guys pick it back up? Um I probably would, but I'd probably be watching here, through my fingers like I was a, watching a Here's a movie. question. What if it did get, <laughs> what if it did get a second season but it retcon episode 12? I would be fine with that. <laughs> I would be absolutely fine with that. Actually, I think they'd be better off for it. Yeah, I think I think if they it got a second season, they should have a new director. And episode twelve was just a bad dream Machi had, and uh, <laughs> it's fine. The the original. I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. I think that the uh, the author learned his lesson. I hope he did. And if if they do this again, no more. Well, they're all professionals. They'll do that. They'll do this right. No, you need to read the script. <laughs> Yeah, God, I feel I feel kind of bad for him because what if this is the only anime his work ever gets and it, it ends up being a bad experience? It's really yeah. sad. Yeah, I mean, he's not like overall he was happy with what they did up to that point. It's just he really didn't. Like... Yeah. I mean, I, I think he would have had to be pretty upset to say what he did. I mean, to say anything. To say anything after refusing creative control, and he even acknowledged, you know, I refuse creative control of the anime, so I know I have no right to say this. Yeah, yeah. but I'm going to. Yeah. As yeah. a fan, I'm going to. As a fan of my own work, I'm going to. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that was a downer. I'm glad we have Bakuan 11 and 12 on the list because the only thing I'm sad about with Bakuan is that Bakuan is now over. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, the, I, I, to be honest, I don't even really remember what happened in episode 11 so much, but in 12, the whole sequence they did, a world where motorcycles don't exist, where Hane is like, oh, I get it, everybody is smart in this world, they realize the concept of motorcycles is neither here nor there, and inherently makes no sense. I thought that was that was so hilarious. I, lo- like, I, I yeah. loved it. And then they bring Jesus back, and he's all, and, and, and it turns out motorcycles are his blessing to humankind. <laughs> I'm just right. like, this... Because he loves, because he loves, you know, weak things. And uh, the only, I think, Perfect. the only perhaps entertaining bitch slap left in the world is Bakuan Jesus bitch slapping Hane. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that whole sequence. Yeah, uh, LB, what'd you think? Uh, overall, I mean, the last episodes, I I watched them, I enjoyed them. Bakuan is one of those shows that. I really do think that it was well done and it was cute for what it was. And, you know, while there were certain moments that made me roll my eyes, like washing their motorcycles, um, 
you know, I I mean, the overall product was good. I don't know if I'd ever pick it back up again. It, I'd have to be pretty bored to do so, but I'm definitely glad that I watched it. Would you be down for a second season? If it got a second season, I'd probably watch it, yeah. I could totally see myself doing that. I'd absolutely okay. watch it. Yeah, I just I love the fact that the whole premise of the show is while it's basic obviously made by someone who loves motorcycles, it's also like an acknowledgement of the fact that motorcycles are completely pointless and that's kind of what makes them great. So. Yeah, I, I don't care about automobiles in general and I got a lot out of the show, so I mean I, th- I think that says something for it. Oh yeah, yeah life Karen like uh, well, it's, well, it's on a similar topic. Like, I recently, I got to watch a couple episodes of Top Gear in a friend's house. I think I kind of understand why some people point the comparison to Bakuan. Oh, he's it's totally riff. It's totally riffing on. No, but I was saying, I, I, I was saying in terms of the element because, like, like as a person who doesn't really care about cars too much, like I saw a couple episodes of Top Gear. Like the way how it's done is done in a very over the top and comedic manner. Where it just it just it's a spoof on like car shows in general, and they even do a ridiculous part. There was a part where they were like racing, and while they're racing, they had like two two planes come by and actually shoot at them, and they have to like dodge the plane shots while trying to make it to the finish line. Yeah, you don't have to be interested in car mechanics to yeah. find that amusing. Yeah, then, yeah, I guess. If uh, I, uh, and there was another and there was another part too where one of the guys invented like this miniature car, almost like the size of a go kart, that's both gas and electric powered. And you also have to wear like a protective suit while wearing it. And he was like driving it around like a mall in a library, just being a total dick to everyone around him. <laughs> And he even brought and he even brought the car to he even brought the, and he even brought the car to a freaking opera while the engine was ramming while everyone was trying to sing and perform. It's like wow. Yeah, I have I've only seen very little Top Gear, but I know they've done yeah. they've done some pretty amusing stuff. And actually, it's kind of nice to see anime take influence from something besides other anime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is nice when that happens. It, sometimes it can seem kind of incestuous that every every show is riffing, riffing on every other yeah, show, and it's like, yeah, don't you guys get out of the house? <laughs> yeah. Anime is a, especially the otaku stuff, is a very incestuous Hell, type of I remember, I remember, I remember Ano did say that to one, one, he did say that quote once, how it's important to, when making any sort of fiction, to also be influenced by stuff outside of that medium. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's funny that you mention Anno, because the times I, I tend to think of that is all the eight million times that every single show has to mention uh, Evangelion. Yeah. Even in ReZero, when, when Subaru wakes up, he's like, oh, unfamiliar ceiling. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> How many years do we have to be past Evangelion before people stop yeah. doing that? <laughs> anyway. Okay, so Bakuan was a hell of a good time, and we wholeheartedly recommend it. Well, maybe LB doesn't recommend it as much, but he still liked it, so there. Okay. Uh, moving on to, and you thought there was never a girl on line 10 and 11? I need to catch up on this one, and Wilson and I are now watching it together, which is part of the reason why I'm not caught up on it. But, um, let's see. But I don't mind being spoiled a little bit. So, uh, LB, what do you think of this the show lately? I don't have much to say about the latest episodes. I personally think, I stand by my opinion that the series basically hit its peak and climax with the wedding scene that closed out like episode 8 or something like that that's where the series really hit its peak and it's been kind of just downhill ever since and been losing steam I'm like I said I'm still enjoying it but it's not you know it's it feels like it's just kind of going through the paces right now and I'm really curious how they're going to end up end the season in any kind of satisfactory way uh, Life Song, do you you concur with that? No, I disagree. Um, I like I like what it's doing. I think I think there's like one like, and I, I think I said this before. There's one last thing they still have to do in the show, and that is really, uh, you know, address um, her uh, Akko's whole the the fact that she's just kind of you know doesn't doesn't really care about the real world, and this. Uh, this whole warfare thing they're doing, the siege warfare thing they're doing in game, is tied back to their school festival. That's why they're doing it. So I, th- I think there's room for them to do, still kind of fit that in and do something with it. And I mean, in, th- in this episode, even we saw a little bit of character growth with Akko, where she's, you know, really upset about how things played out, as opposed to just going along with the game and not really, not really caring if they win or lose. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really like what 
what they're doing with it. Maybe they didn't need to go through all the rest of this, but I think there's definitely room for them to do it, and I think they're doing a good job with it. Oh, I definitely agree that it was really nice to see Akko, you know, level up, as they put it. I thought that that was a really nice little touch, and it was, fun, and it was you know, touching to see, but, you know, I... But I... There's only, what, one episode left? Maybe two? Uh, I just... I don't see them, you know, wrapping it... I just don't really see them wrapping it up in any kind of solid manner, which is going to frustrate me a little bit. If It's possible that they might, and if I'm wrong, I will openly admit it and bow to your greatness. But, you know, I just... <laughs> I just don't know if they're going to, and it, that's going to frustrate me a little, because I don't know if this series will get a second season. I don't know I don't know if it will or not, but I'm under the impression it's been at least fairly successful with the anime. I guess we'll find out more a month or two from now when we really see sales, and, and more importantly, light novel sales. Yeah, totally. Okay, so I'm, I'm curious to watch uh, next week and see whether I, I agree with either of you, whether I completely disagree with both of you. All right, so with that, I think we're ready to take a little break, a little break, and then we'll come back with the the shows on the back end. So, everybody ready? Yeah. Yep. Ready yep. for hang up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to our Kohai League. We're gonna start with Shonen Maid nine and ten, which I feel bad I am behind on because I like Shonen Maid and I would like to catch up, but it did not happen for me this week. Uh, LB, is this show still very much in your wheelhouse? Oh, very much. So this is still one of those shows that I look forward to watching every week. I'm really enjoying where it's going. Uh, I like that they're introducing a little bit of drama uh, in with the whole introduction of Madoka's mother suddenly appearing and her kind of silent, kind of quietly saying to herself, oh, maybe Ch- Chihira should come live with me. You know, I think that's an interesting little twist that's going to be fun to watch play out over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I actually had an interesting Shonen Maid little experience uh, on Twitter a couple of days ago, which made me laugh that um, I put up a tweet about a week ago, you know, just one of those idle tweets saying, oh, you know, if you didn't watch Shonen Maid this season for whatever reason, you missed out on one of the best shows. And, you know, like most of my tweets, it mostly got ignored, which is fine. I'm used to that. Yeah, um, <laughs> About a week later, though, uh, Kate, uh, voice actress Caitlin Glass retweeted me uh, and, you know, found that tweet and retweeted it. And, you know, it got some favorites. It got some, you know, mentions, which was cool. Uh, but one person replied saying that he couldn't stand to watch a show that was dedicated to cross-dressing. And, yeah, he got a nice little lesson in social media because... I jumped on him, Caitlin jumped on him, a couple of my friends that saw the tweet and ended up jumping on him. It finally got to the point where a few hours later, I saw a reply from him saying, all right, all right, I'll watch the show and I'll send a review later. It's like, oh, victory. What made him think that saying that on Twitter was a good idea? <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, he got an interesting little lesson in social media, apparently. On, on anime Twitter of all places. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was just an interesting little experience that made me giggle and I wanted to share since it was related to Shonen Maid. Yeah, well, actually, I'm kind of glad you bring that up because sometimes I, I'm thinking about Twitter or any social media thing being like, eh, should I even bother to talk about this show? Blah, blah, blah. And you forget, you know, there are people who make these shows who probably like it when people are talking about it. It's not, it's not pointless just to say you're enjoying it because if it's one of the lesser-known shows, you know, they may not see a lot of that. So, yeah, it's nice. Uh, Life, how are you on Shonen Maid? Uh, LB pretty much said it, but <clears throat> I'll just add, you know, this is the kind of show that really inspired me originally when I first started watching everything in a season at the start <laughs> to do that. Uh, this, I would have missed the show if I if I hadn't done that. You know, if we, if we hadn't done that, I I would I would not have watched Shonen Maid, and it's one of the one of the best shows of the season, I think. Yeah. Man, I, I made a bad call. Earlier today, I was like, I have time to catch up on either Shonen Maid or High School Fleet. I'll watch High School Fleet. Oh, I think I, I know <laughs> that decision. You should bump up Shonen Maid to the Senpai League as a promotion before it ends. Yeah, you, you know what? We should do that. That, that would be <laughs> Seeing a, as much it. as you all love the show, it deserves that promotion. Yeah, you're right. Okay, watch for that next week. <laughs> Shonen Maid in its new time slot on our podcast. 
Okay, well, I, I wish I could contribute to this discussion, but I stupidly did not watch it, so I'm going to have to catch up before next week. So, I'm going to move on to High School Fleet 10 and 11. Not a very good use of my time, because uh, episode 10 was another... They had a festival episode, so it's basically a retreat of what we've already seen, because they've had, like, 10 parties on the ship already, really. <laughs> so who cares? And um, then 11 was actually a very serious, action-packed episode, and I was kind of like thinking to myself, it would be so much easier for me to take this seriously if the show had been like more like this from the beginning. But if it had been more like this from the beginning, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it because then it wouldn't have been zany. So I, I was a little bit confused by what was going on on the Musashi, though, because it seemed like uh, maybe we were seeing things at a different time or something, but it seemed like... No, no. Uh, uh, let, let, let me explain. That was actually live. How? That was live. What, but but it seemed like Mocha and friends were only just finding out now, after like weeks of this, that their ship was controlled by mind control people. How did they just realize this now? Okay, maybe that part wasn't live. <laughs> I, okay, you, you know what? That, you're right. That is weird. I, they, they they did that in two different segments, though, didn't they? Um, there's the scene where the girl comes running out of like the torpedo room or something. It's like they're all possessed, and then they see like the creepy pod people, and then they they find food and barricade themselves. And I'm thinking, like, wait, if they're the only non-infected people on the ship, shouldn't they have found out that about... Was, that, was a, that was a flashback. It had to be a flashback. Okay, it didn't didn't seem like it. it, was, it was yeah, because they, they, I think they I think they do that flashback, and then they cut right to the, the, few, the present. And continue. Okay, well, there was that... Um, there was that scene from a couple of weeks back where Mike stupidly gets in, like, a little jet ski to try to save Mocha, and she yeah. sees Mocha being distressed. So, obviously, the situation in the Musashi has been like that for, for some time. So, it was just it was just confusing the way they uh, portrayed it. Yeah, I guess this wasn't very well-directed. Yeah. And uh, also, I'm not really sure what to, what to make of the whole Mashiro and... Uh, uh, Mike thing at the end where Mashiro is like, well, I'll support you, blah, blah, It seems like, if anything, it should be the opposite at this point, and Mike should just be supporting Mashiro because Mashiro is more equipped to be the captain right now, so I... But I, I've bitched about that before. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with where they're... where they've decided to go with it. You've made your peace with it. I guess so. It's high school fleet. You're not going to get too worked up. No, that's pretty much it. Okay, so next week is probably the conclusion, the be-all, end-all. Harukaze in a pinch for the umpteenth time. Okay, so uh, we're going to move on to Anne Happy 10 and 11. And I did keep up with this show. Although, to tell you the truth, I know I enjoyed it. I don't actually remember what happened very well. I remember they actually did something with Timothy, because they must have heard me complaining about how they never used Timothy. So they were like, <laughs> you know what? We'll throw 40 Timothys at you. Put that yeah, in the pipe. Yeah, uh, they're, they're playing hide-and-seek with the giant killer Timothy right now. Oh, yeah, and doesn't the episode end on a cliffhanger or something like that? Yeah, I think, like, uh, he just found somebody, or they're... Yeah, yeah, they're, they're running away from him. Yeah, okay, I, oh, I... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, he shoots out a bunch of little mini Timothys. Right, right. Um, yeah, uh, I think... I think we are going to have to wait for the conclusion of this arc to have much to say about it, because other than that, we're just going to end up reiterating everything we like about Anne Happy, which everybody knows by now, I think. yeah. Speaking of which, uh, Sakamoto 9 and 10. Um, that's sure kind of mine. <laughs> Not yet it isn't. I have to get to my date with Sakamoto. But first, let's make a token attempt to discuss the show. <laughs> um, I like the thing they did with... Um, uh, what's... Okay, uh, you know, Sakamoto's little little buddy and his mom who looks exactly like him i'm kind of surprised at the amount of emphasis they've given her character but it's kind of what makes sakamoto such a kind of cool cool quirky show that they would bother to kind of show things from her perspective because as much as she's like a comic character i think she you're she's also sympathetic and i i tend to like whenever she's in it uh what do you think lb uh i do like it the um i thought it was really cool that they brought her in i thought the way that they brought her in was kind of interesting, not necessarily in a great way, but definitely, you know, interesting and kind of fun. Um, I, I had more fun with the more recent episode, though. Episode 10, was it, I believe? Yeah. 
Okay, the yeah, mix- episode mixer. 10, when they're at the mixer, I had so much fun with that segment. I thought watching Sakamoto play saxophone with his arm farts and then <laughs> sing opera at the mixer <laughs> and what? talk stampede. Yeah, you're regretting dropping it now, aren't you, Lysa? <laughs> <laughs> what? I told, yeah, you should have stuck with it. Uh, he uh, literally... Uh, 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 I'll try to catch up eventually. Yeah, he literally, during the middle of a mixer, they're doing, one guy is doing karaoke, and a song gets cut off, but Sakamoto doesn't want to let, doesn't want the music to end, so he's blowing his lips against his arm, and it sounds like he's playing a saxophone perfectly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because Sakamoto is the awesome. I guess if anything, life, you could catch up with the (laughs) show for when they get ready for the final episode of Sakamoto. Uh, I won't be caught up by then, but I'll try to catch it by some some t- some point next season. I'll finish it. Okay. Um, so are are we ready for my date with Sakamoto? Because I can't let LB have the final date with Sakamoto. That would that would just not not be right. Because you know you wined and dined him and, and danced with the city of Seattle as your backdrop, and I figured I had to show him the charms of my home city. So are, are we ready? Okay, I I am ready to hear this. Okay, this, this may take a moment. <clears throat> um, listeners, you might want to pause and just check the outline, go to the next show. And then, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> okay, so the evening starts. I tell Wilson that I'm going out on a date with Sakamoto, to which he responds, why are you leaving me and our small child to go out on a date with another man? So I respond by giving him a box full of rare magic cards and Good Smiles 1-6 scale Galkochan figure, which just came out and is very cute. So I give him the figure in the cards, and I'm like, is it okay if I go out to meet Sakamoto now? And he's like, who are you? Why are you still here? So, okay. I meet Sakamoto at the train station. He's wearing his school uniform. I'm wearing that dress that Bjork wore to the Oscars one year with the swan curled around the neck. We take the train into Manhattan, and as we go into the tunnel under Penn Station, it gets pitch black in the train car, as it sometimes does. Frightened, I move closer to Sakamoto. Don't be afraid, he says, and reaches into his pocket. I assume he's going for a cigarette lighter, but instead he releases a single firefly from his breast pocket. The dancing light from that firefly provides just enough illumination for me to see his beautiful eyes. We get off at Penn Station and make our way to a high-class restaurant. My entree is caviar and truffle foam. I sigh, saying that I wish my entree was in the form of a sorbet instead. Sakamoto nods, then tilts a finger towards my plate. A spray of liquid nitrogen... Uh, rigged up from a tank somewhere inside his uniform, freezes my entree into a frozen treat. I taste it, but then I change my mind and say I prefer a gazpacho. So Sakamoto begins rapidly doing cartwheels, ranging, raising the ambient temperature in the room until my gelée melts into a delicious gazpacho. Having raised a sweat, Sakamoto then stops off at the fountain in front of Lincoln Center to freshen up. I shyly turn my back as he changes into another identical school uniform that he pulled from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Are you with me so far? Still with you. This is great. (laughs) Because the classy molecular gastronomy restaurant barely served us any food, we we go to McDonald's for a late night snack. We get two Happy Meals, which come with My Little Pony toys. I sigh and explain to Sakamoto that I prefer the classic My Little Ponies from my childhood. You mean like this, he says, and pulls an original 1980s My Little Pony Happy Meal toy out of his breast pocket. It's my favorite pony, Fizzy, who I happen to know was never used as part of a McDonald's Happy Meal promotion. How did you get this toy? It never even existed, I exclaim. Sakamoto just smiles, that enigmatic smile of his. Sakamoto then hails a horse-drawn carriage for us to take to Central Park. We exit the carriage, and Sakamoto spreads a checkered picnic tablecloth down to a beautiful field of summer blossoms. I sit on the cloth, then hundreds of birds come, summoned by Sakamoto's very presence. The swans are actually a little freaked out with my dead swan dress, but I'm with Sakamoto, so they're, they're okay with it. They get over it. Before I can blink, Sakamoto leaves and returns with two big cups of gelato, blood orange and dark chocolate, two of my favorite flavors. Which one is mine, I ask? Both, he says, and puts them both in my lap. As the birds serenade us with their version of Phil Collins' hits in the air tonight, I savor my delicious desserts, and he gestures at something up above, beyond the canopy of the trees, and I see the Empire State Building is lit up in pink and green, the colors of Fizzy, my favorite My Little Pony. I can't believe you did all this for me, I say, my mouth full of gelato. That's not all, he says. 
I heard you liked My Little Pony, so I actually got you a My Little Pony. Then I turn around, and there's a little baby Shetland pony with a gift-wrapped saddle behind me. The pony takes a lick of my delicious gelato and puts its head on my lap as the birds sing us all to sleep on our bed of wildflowers. When I awaken the next morning, I've somehow been transported to the Four Seasons Hotel as I slept. A single wildflower on the pillow next to me. The end. You complained about me spending too much money? (laughs) Hey, you raised the stakes! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, what what does it what does an orchestra of birds cost? <laughs> no, well, that would be free because Sakamoto's animal charm summons the, the bird orchestra. I think it's it's paying to light up the um, Empire State Building in pink and green that would have been expensive. <laughs> 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 and the Four Seasons Hotel that's probably pretty expensive too. But um, so what what do you think? Do you do you feel so confident that your date smokes my dates now? Huh? 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 Oh, trust me, we are going to be coming back to this next week. <laughs> oh, he's not giving up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sakamoto will be over. And, okay, we're going to have to, you know what we're going to have to start doing, though? Because I realized this was getting kind of long. We're going to have to impose a time minute of, like, two minutes or less for Sakamoto and dance. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be challenging. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we're ready to move on, right? Okay, the next show on my list is Tanaka-kun is always listless, but this is another one I unfortunately did not catch this week, and I think Life Song is the only other one watching Tanaka-kun, so I think we're just going to skip it and just spend extra time on it next week, right? Sure. Okay, so that moves us on to Super Lovers, episode 10 and 11, and Super Lovers is a weird one that ended at 11 episodes. So we're wrapping up the show this week, and, uh, hmm... I find it interesting that to create drama, to kind of force Ren and Haru apart, it's actually coming from the semi-reasonable place of Haruko coming back and and being like, Ren, Japanese school is terrible for you. You should be a nuclear physicist like I am. So, um, kind of an interesting development. And even though I think she's a horrible parent, I think Haruko is actually kind of an interesting character. But uh, I feel like this this show maybe ended at kind of a weird place, and I would have wanted another episode to tie things up. Uh, Life? Yeah, it kind of just stops right in the middle. Yeah. Y- you can tell that it's stopping right right in the middle. And I assume it's just going to pick right up like it, uh, like it never ended. Or maybe they'll just be in Canada, as this show does. Or maybe they will just be in Canada, and we will have no idea what happened. Yeah, but I think they made, they implied that, well, there's that whole part where I think it's Aki's, like, well, I don't want to see Haruko-san because she wouldn't even visit Haru when he was in the hospital, and they kind of imply that she had some reason for that, but then they don't tell you what it is. It's like, Did what they? The they? They sort of, impl- they, yeah, they, they, they were like, well, that was because, and then they trailed off. So I'm wondering if they're actually going to give us a reason why Haruko's been such a horrible parent to Haru because it what it seems like maybe this isn't the case but what it seems like is once she realized that he wasn't going to be a science genius she just lost all interest in him and like dropped him like a hot potato to the point where she let him grow up in an orphanage so <laughs> that, yeah. that's pretty horrible on there <clears throat> she she is very confusing in that it does seem like she she, she acts like she doesn't care and then she acts like she does care and it's like what is their relationship it doesn't it's not it doesn't make much sense. Well, one thing that actually kind of was consistent is when Ren and Haru were talking about her, and Ren is like, is it okay that you never see Haruko-san and she's your mother? And Haru's like, well, as long as we know what the other one's doing okay, we're fine with it. And I'm like, well, considering how little love he's gotten from his mother, he probably would think that's normal. He doesn't know what a normal mother-son relationship is like, so. Yeah, I mean, she actively refuses to let him call her mom. Yeah, I've always... I don't know. I know there are some there are some families who prefer that because they think using titles kind of implements a false hierarchy when you can just use names. Uh, I don't know. That's just weird think, to me. I don't think that's what it is, though. I think in his case, it's that she she really doesn't want him thinking of her as as his mom. He he wants yeah, him that's to, true. He, he wants he wants she wants him to think of the dead woman who married her husband as his mom. Yeah, Haruko, I, I hope when the show comes back, they go more into Haruko-san. It may turn out that she's just a reprehensible human being, but if she's not, there's going to be an interesting thing. Yeah, I, I, I hope they... Well, I either hope I hope one or two things happens. Either they don't, and they they leave it ambiguous, or two, they do it justice. Because I have a feeling what will happen is they will do it, and it'll just be another 
disconnected thing that doesn't really add up with everything else we know about all the rest of the events of these characters' lives. Yeah, it'll be another thing where the writers of the show are working on different computers in different rooms and they don't talk to each other. They don't talk to each other, right. Yeah. Though I don't remember much sexy stuff happening in 10 and 11. I kind of had this huge, huge sexual, oh my god, it's really happening moment in episode 9. I think 10 and 11 were actually pretty pedestrian in that regard, if memory serves. Yeah, well, what's her name? Uh, Haruko? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when she shows up, it all kind of... They all kind they're of like, they're like, let's not have sex in front of our mother. <laughs> yeah, probably. Although, not. Ren did say something interesting though. Um, at one point, he's talking about it's obvious that he actually thinks of Haruko as like an authority figure, as a parent, in a way he doesn't think of Haru. Yes. And he kind of says something to Haru to the fact that I've never thought of you. He doesn't say this point blank, but I think the implication is, you know, I've never thought of you as a brother. I don't want to be your brother, but I play the role of your brother because that's the only way I get to be with you. If I'm not your brother, then who am I to you? So, I thought yeah. that was interesting. Yeah, I mean, they're, uh, they, need to, they need to do more with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think the reason why, you know, a lot of people think the show is offensive, it's the whole, well, it's family members and all the reasons why that, why incest is wrong, blah, 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 blah. But I think Ren, Ren would yeah, counter right. that they, he never thought of him as a as family member. Yeah, I think they have gotten past that. Yeah. Okay, so... um. I have to say, I mean, as th- there's just something very strangely addictive about this show that when I saw we were out of episodes, I was just kind of like, aww. And I know it's coming back, but I I, I don't know. There's a lot of shows this re- this season I have extremely mixed feelings about. It's very very weird. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, and, and you know what? I'm surprised that I I found it Super Lovers as interesting as I did. Yeah, because at least for me, I had the uh, eye candy component. And I was like, "Ooh, yeah, hi, he's cute." And I don't, I don't like, have that. <laughs> yeah, you get nothing out of it. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> was that the first time you sat through like a Shonen Eye slash Yaoi show? It's first my finished one, I guess. Uh, I technically I haven't finished it. What was uh, there was one other that I made it about six, seven episodes into. Oh, good night, Gwen. Good night. Good night. <laughs> um, sorry for that interruption. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Good night. Okay. Um, a show affection to your aw. daughter. Podcasting. <laughs> um, what show and I did you almost finish? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I can't. It was a JC JC staff show. What was Mirage it called? Blaze? No. If you were to say the name, I'd probably get it. Uh, yeah, they're actors. Uh, if that helps, and the the one kid is really shy. He wants to be a manga a, a manga artist, and he's really 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 bad. Uh, and, he <laughs> cross, and he cross dresses, and he and he and he hooks up with this other dude, and, and who's a famous actor, who remembered him from his childhood, and and the other dude is interested in in him because he thinks he's a chick. Yeah, not. I not think I know else. what show you're talking about. I just don't remember the name of it. Yeah, I can't think of the name of it. Well, if anyone figures it out, send, uh, let me know and I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, the next show on my list is um, Cerberus, episodes 11 and 12, but this is the last show that I missed this week, so obviously we're going to have to spend some time talking about Cerberus uh, next week. So I, I didn't lose my enthusiasm for it. I just We had stuff this weekend. I just ran out of time. Okay, so that brings us to the Chibi League and Tonkatsu DJ Agataro. 10 and 11. Uh, 10 didn't really do much for me one way or the other. Uh, but 11, I thought it was nice to see Agataro doing something for his mentor. Because I kind of forgot that Oily-san existed. But I like the fact that they're putting this whole show together. And it's not even for Agataro. It's it's for Agataro's buddy. So I thought that was yeah. cool. Sal? Yeah, I actually found 10 to be kind of funny. Just because that whole thing was like that one DJ was trying to sabotage Agataro. Because he was known to be the... Oh, he's the DJ that's able... That's known for ruining the career of every new DJ. But because Agataro happened to go to that Tonkatsu shop and learn about the low temperature. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of ironic, though. It's like he, he, he was the first guy that thwarted that guy thanks to learning about how Tonkatsu was made in, this, in, in Ikebukuro versus Shibuya. The question is, which do you think is tastier? Yeah. 
I prefer the slow cook just because the moistier, the juicier is be- the better for me when it comes to fried stuff. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. I probably would too. <laughs> but yeah. uh, life? I- I'm just... I'm just amazed that here we are this far into the show, and the secret of the universe is basically cooking yeah. this tonkatsu. And yeah. I I love the fact that they can always bring it back to that. Yes. Yeah, I think I'm going to start trying to apply that to my life. Like, when I ever yeah. have a problem, like, what can tonkatsu teach me about this situation? Even with, <laughs> Wait, episode, even with episode really 11, when they were setting up the event and whatnot... Which, man, episode 12 is going to be real because they're foreshadowing to that storm. So how are they going to overcome that? Yeah. Oh, they're going to they're gonna party in the storm. Yes. I, I, I think that's that's going to be cool, in my opinion. That's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> I, I really do hope that after this, that maybe you'll get another season, hopefully. I don't know. Do you think... I, I well, wonder if just assu- the constant assu- assuming, finding a way to tie it well, back to Tonkatsu would work for another season. I, I, assuming that the manga is still going, because I know it's based off like a short manga series. Yeah, I mean, if it had another season, I would watch it, but it's it's not like, oh my god, I really, really hope there's another season, it, but, you know, who, who knows? I do feel so. like it's kind of dragging. Um, I, I've, I've enjoyed it, but I do feel like it's time for it to end. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to move on to Space Patrol Luluko, uh 11 and 12, and 10 blew me away with their actually killing Luluko. Uh 11, with her coming back to life, it was kind of predictable, and I thought she came back to life maybe a little bit too easily, but... <laughs> Given that it's, you know, Space Patrol with Luluko, I wasn't going to be too critical of it, but 12 I just loved. 12 I thought was fantastic to the point I was sitting there thinking, how am I, like, so moved by this show when it's a short and it's been so ridiculous for so much of it? But I'm more moved by Luluko than a lot of shows this season, so how are they doing this? Uh, yeah. So? Oh, wait, sorry to interrupt, but it seems that Agataro manga did end, so, yeah, this will be the final episode, so yay! Okay, hopefully 12, it'll just go out on a high note then, but back to Luluko. Oh yeah, but back to Luluko, it's like, I gotta give Trigger some props for, like, kind of doing their their ridiculous Trigger slash Gynax final battle thing, but treating it to Luluko confessing to Nova, that was, like, freaking adorable and, and awesome at the same time. Life? Didn't he actually lie to her? Well, the thing is, there was that one time when, when he said, you're very special to me, Luluko, and they they never, but that was before he grew feelings, because he doesn't get feelings until episode 12, so, so and they've never, they've never reconciled that. I wondered if maybe, maybe the cop-out was going to be like, well, he said, oh, well, you're very special to her, but everything is equally special to him, because he doesn't, he doesn't care about anything, but they didn't even go, they didn't, they didn't even say that. Well, maybe it could yeah. have been the interpretation, be, assuming that the Black Holians plan to break Luluko's heart was set in stone from the get-go. So maybe that or was a maybe, special. Or maybe, you know, Trigger has been playing this by so seat of the pants, I didn't even realize what they wanted to do with yeah. Nova until they were actually making episode 10. Yeah, yeah, they may, that may be what happened. Yeah. Because that line definitely does not gel with uh, the, the rest of uh, what we've, know, it what makes, we've seen. It makes, it makes me sad. Otherwise, I, I loved it. it was a, I thought it was a great episode. I, 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 I had to say the same thing. Like, yeah, why is this so emotionally moving? It's the stupid little short. <laughs> Yeah, and it's so great with, with uh, Luluko's mom coming back and being like, well, I see you become a damn fine woman in my accents. And for some reason, that is so strangely satisfying for, like, two know what? Yeah. we barely know. I, actually, I think my favorite part of the whole episode is the one where they somehow, she somehow, Luluko somehow gives the dad his body back. And he kind of comes yeah. to in the middle of the battle, like, what's going on? She's like, oh, Luluko's confessing to a boy. He's like, what? She's confessing to a boy? <laughs> I love the way they're having that, like, totally normal, yeah. like, parental yeah. conversation. Yeah. Like, like, forgetting they were, forgetting that they were enemies, <laughs> like, a few episodes back. <laughs> well, no, I, 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 it's not even that they forgot. Really... They, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. It's just business as usual. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, I, I, I don't think we uh, we discussed this at the beginning of the podcast. Is Luluko over? Is this the end now? No, one more episode, which sees Before... probably the last episode, which is probably season five. <laughs> season five will be done in one, yeah. Yeah. Man. Also, apparently someone pointed out that because Nova had scars on his back, maybe that was an unintentional Kiz Niver reference. <laughs> Actually, I was wondering what was up with those scars, because they kind of almost look like... <laughs> There's a show on network television called uh, Lucifer, where the main character has... He is Lucifer, he's the devil, but he has scars on the, his back from where his wings were torn off. So I saw that, and I immediately thought, does he have wings that were torn off? But that wouldn't really gel with the rest of his character, but who knows. I don't know, but it's something I'm really going to be thinking about, is how Space Patrol Luluko managed to short-circuit doing 
what you would consider being important, like character and plot building work, and it didn't end up mattering at all because it still is emotionally impactful as so many other things. So, I, I mean, good on Trigger for making it work. Well, but. <laughs> well, if, well, if you remember, like that was one of the most consistent things in this show, were like the Lulu Co and Nova moments. Like they were like yeah, in almost they, every they episode. Did did lay those scenes out for us so they did actually have some built some, like some it was yeah because it, it's like all these random things were just there to kind of challenge luco while she was trying to make the goal of trying to confess to nova but the show is just so random that and and her i guess her confidence level at the same time were like an obstacle <laughs> yeah um so i'm looking forward to the last episode of luco and also kind of sad because i don't want it to be over at this point but all good things, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> okay, and on that note, and this is not a good segue at all, we're going to go to Pande Piece 11 and 12, and these two episodes were both so dull, I don't remember either of them. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they went swimming in episode 11, and that is about all I've got. There were, and there was, like, virtually no bread in either of them, either. There was bread. That, okay, they showed bread for, like, a second, but yeah. it wasn't really about bread. <laughs> yeah, like, the bread just was there for a few, for maybe ten seconds. Like, I think there was that, that, that steak that beef sandwich made from some specific bread. That one bread with... Yeah, the cod with the cod cutting. No, wait, that was in the last episode. No, it was another bread that had, like, the ham piece on top, I think. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Did you get more out of the most recent Pande piece than I did, Sal? Because I was just like, this is new enough for like, me now. Yeah, they were like, whatever. So, is that going to be... Is there going to be more, or is 12 the last episode? Yeah, this is another one where I'm not sure, because it certainly didn't really feel like it ended with much finality, but yeah. just given the style of the show, that might just be the way they roll, you know? So, uh, Life, what do you think? Yeah, uh, even listening to you two talk about the episodes, I don't remember anything. I, I know yeah. I watched them. Yeah. Okay, so I think Ponte Peace is one show we can be non-ambivalent about and say we just don't think it was very good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I mean, it did have one or two moments here or there, but... Uh, Wait a second. I think 12 might have been the last episode. According to my anime list, it has 13 episodes. Oh, okay. Never mind. Cool. So we have one more. Yep. Hopefully, hopefully we can get through the week and still remember it. <laughs> That'll be our challenge. Like, we've given up on Pandey PC even having a joke. Our, our challenge is can oh, we remember yeah. anything? Oh, yeah! There was also the, I think, a donut <laughs> reference for, like, the lifesaver for the for the little, for the one with the French bread, for French bread girl. Wait, what was the reference? I think it was a reference to a donut or a bagel because of her considering, like, a protection device because she doesn't know how to swim. Um, oh, you're saying that counts as the joke for the week, maybe. Yeah, yeah but You have to get really liberal in your interpretation of what a joke is in the show to pass, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, it doesn't need to be funny. <laughs> I didn't say that was a joke, I was saying that was the moment I remember. I gotcha. Oh, okay. Alright, so, well, okay, now, this, normally I kind of like ending on Pande Peace because of the randomness of it, but this week I'm kind of bummed that we're ending on Pande Peace, but that's okay, we've had enough good stuff this week, I think. So, are, are we done for this week? I think so. Yes. Okay, okay, so thanks, listeners. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, sorry I missed some shows next week. Um, next week, I think, actually, next week we're going to handle everything that didn't wrap up this week, and I think we're going to do Sword Art Online, right? Uh, are we still doing that? I think next week is probably the best time to do it because we're going to have a shorter list of shows before before summer starts. Right? What are we doing? Uh, Sword Art Online. Okay. Box, comments, suggestions. Okay. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> um, basically, cool we're just gonna do a uh, a segment on Sword Art Online, and we're we're gonna cover the rest of the shows that haven't that haven't finished yet next season. But we'll also spend some time talking about that. Uh, hopefully, we'll do some other special episodes too as we go on. So, okay, thanks again, listeners. Have a nice evening. Good night. Good night. Take care. Night. And Sakamoto is mine. <laughs>